How's it going, guys? It's Randy here, back for week number four of the Pokemon Global Battle League. After our week uh, wide bye week, we are back here facing against uh, Roots, coach of the New Jersey Brobats. Now, this has been a long time coming for this game. You know, we've uh, known each other for quite for a few years on Twitch now. Uh, he's been a supporter of mine for a while. Obviously, he's a really nice guy, really cool dude. He's the reason why I was accepted into this league last year, even though I was a backup choice. So, you know, I was definitely one of his first, you know, choices for sure. Uh, but, you know, I mess with him a lot. You know, as much as I do, he's a really nice guy. He supports me. He supports a lot of streamers. A lot of streamers. Uh, so, you know, really nice guy. Well, he's also doing a lot more leagues as well. He joined another league. Um, the uh, UBL, if I'm not mistaken. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, you guys should check him out. He has draft league content on there as well as just like... <clears throat> other stuff he's doing a lot of vgc as well I'm not sure if he's gonna upload anything along the lines of that but you definitely should go check him out um definitely a lot more of a casual player for sure but we're gonna wipe the floor with them today because you know we we, we want to beat him you know we, we obviously want to beat him um we, we want to win every week um obviously we came out with a really really tight win last week really awesome game uh, but this week won't be really any easier because we have a lot of uh we have rain we're facing up against rain his team consists of mega septile celestila which is a team on user potential user swampert regular swampert keep that in mind it is a regular swampert fortress excuse me guard of war polito drapion ambipom kieran black another possible team on user and ludicolo so excuse me once again um, as you can tell, he's got a bit of a mini rain core. He's got uh, Steela, Fortress, Toad, um, and Ludicolo. You know, I, I include Steela and Fortress because, you know, they take advantage of the lack of fire weakness. But, you know, Electric Spam is quite useful against them because his only ground type is uh, Mega Swamp. I mean, it's, Mega, it's regular Swampert. He does have Sceptile, but, you know, that's not really the greatest, you know, answer considering most run HP Ice. And, um, but, you know, it's faster than everything, so it's still a good answer. Um... But ultimately, it's kind of a... It doesn't do that much damage. That's the one thing I noticed about it. Karen Black can do damage. Um, and so can uh, Mega Sceptile. Celestila can somewhat. But besides that, his team doesn't really put out a lot of offense in turns. So the whole goal is to be able to wear down his team. And hopefully just keep the offense up. Because once I get up Trick Room for a little bit, um, I should be fine in order to wall break a lot of his things like Steela. Which is going to be a problem for my team considering I'm only running... Uh, one real legitimate way of killing it, and that is his thunderous on the screen. So um, it's gonna be kind of a problem. He's really good at using Celesteela, so I gotta hope I can play around and hopefully and make something happen. I am a little worried about things because this team was built by my front office guys. Uh, shout out to them, of course, youngster Bill, Aaron Barden. Um, with all these teams, I've basically been taking their teams and just playing them, you know. And despite not like messing with them too much, I still know how to play them because they build really easy for me. But here in this matchup, I'm not sure how it's gonna work out. I probably would have built it a different way, but I honestly don't have much time to go back and change it up so we're just gonna run, run with what we got here um you know uh i need to check something real quick actually but um anyway so um but anyways yeah it's a tough matchup i hope i don't you know throw this game away it's gonna be a little difficult to um to uh you know play around his fat stuff ambipom is annoying as well but Ultimately, I feel like I have a decent enough team to put up offense and hopefully uh, pick out a pick up a win. So, uh, leading the way, we have Go Rangers, the Thunderous. Um, I'm pretty much just messing with Root this week. I'm naming all my Pokemon Go Rangers except Sakataka. So, um, running a uh, modest Tornadus Thunderous, I should say. Sorry, um, modest max near max speed. Got 244 speed, 12 HP. Um, Thunderbolt U-turn, Defog, and Focus Blast. Having Defog is decent to be able to get rid of hazards because he has potential hazard stack on his team. Um, Thunderbolt and Focus Blast are pretty much all I need to hit his entire team. The only Mon, um, you know, Focus Blast is good to hit the um, Drapion, uh, I, I guess. Um, although, I'm looking at um, the way this should be. It probably should be Head and Power of Grass because um, Swampert is a, you know, a decent check. And Focus Blast doesn't really hit anything besides Drapion. Thunderbolt probably hits a little bit harder, so... Oh, I'm sorry. It's right for Karen Black. That's my bad. It's for Karen Black, so that's on me. Um, but yeah, focus blast is for Karen Black, and you turn to just be able to get out of there and get initiative. I do have a life orb, which could probably seem a little uh, weird, but it's definitely a good you know hit on Ludicolo and, and stuff like that. So um, obviously, this is my way, main way of dealing with Politoed and Steela offensively. Uh, I do expect Steela to have a Wakan Berry. I, I, I do. Uh, he likes to run Berry like that to take a hit and one shot me. Um, I'm assuming it's going to have a rock type move as well, so I do got to be careful around that. But besides that, Thunderous is pretty self-explanatory. Um, it outruns his entire roster outside of rain besides Ambipom and his Mega Sceptile. But the mod that it does outrun, it's able to nearly one-shot 
or you know does one shot things after after rocks. So hopefully I can get up rocks and start doing a lot of damage with that. So next up we have Stack Prescott, the Stack Attacker, which is having a pretty nice season offensively. We are running Trick Room, the same set we've ran the past couple of weeks. Uh, we did opt to go with Stealth Rock here um, over you know something like Earthquake or you know. Um, Something to hit, uh, you know, Swampert or his Fortress. Something I'm not really too... Um, I'm a little worried about that, but honestly, if I feel I need to make a change, I'll make a change before the battle starts. But ultimately, this feels like the right set because getting a Stealth Rock would be very nice for me, seeing as how his only removal um, is a Rapid Spinner, and I do have a Spin Blocker. Um, I believe he does have Defog in... Uh, actually, I guess his only removal, actually. So if I were to get a Brox, he probably can't get rid of them. But um, this thing will probably be heavily prepped for, so I'm sure he'll have his way to deal with this thing and one-shot it. So, um, But if I can get a Brox, the Brox would be a very nice part to win this game because Steel, SF, Tile, um, Toad, um, Karen Black would all get worn down. That's something I do need to get up in order for me to have a nice time wearing them down. So we're on the same sp set spread as we have always done all season, so nothing really else to explain here. Um, obviously, its potential is... Uh, you know, unlimited. Um, he's going to have probably Pert and Fortress to check this thing, so hopefully I can play around those two. Not the biggest deals in the world. So next up, we have Go Rangers, the Mew, running will wisp Ice Beam, Roost, and U-Turn. So our only attacking move is indeed the Ice Beam. So that is mainly for the Mega Sceptile, because Mega Sceptile is a legitimate threat to the team. Um, I probably should have tried to fit some other coverage moves on here, but I felt the other three were necessary. Um, you turn Roost and will o -Wisp. will o -Wisp was nice to be able to uh, nerf his that um, the uh, Emma Palm, the the Drapion. Now he can't you know deal with Mew all that well. Um, you know, it's able to suspend, you know, to get burned on stuff. So, um, it's, it's probably the one move I probably could change to maybe like flamethrower or like aura sphere to hit Kieran Black. But at the same time, um, you know, Kieran Black is one of those things to where I could probably, if I get a trick room, it won't be doing much to me regardless, but I do have to be careful around Kieran Black because it is a huge threat because it's really hard to switch into, um, for sure. So, a um, bit of a weird split set, you know, when I looked at the team initially, it's, it's a little weird, but... Um, I'm hoping I can make it work in this game because, you know, I, I really want to win this game because I, I want to beat Root, but uh, the matchup is a little funky, and I'm hoping we can still come out with a win. So next up, we have Kalfa Grigas, um, Trick Room, Willowith, Shadow Ball, Nasty Plot. Now, again, Willowith was a little interesting. Um, he has a Drapion. He has an Amber Palm, which walled this thing technically. Um, but, you know, um, I, this is probably the one mod I probably will change. I'll probably run either a Hidden Power fi Fighting or, um, yeah, probably Hidden Power Fighting, honestly, because I hit Strapion decently well. It's super effective on, on Ambipom, but then again, if you will with Strapion, it probably can't do much to you anyways because it's going to be burned. You know, knockoffs and it only hurt the first turn. So, um, you know, I think Willowis probably is a good play because Shadow Ball is going to be doing a lot to it. Ambipom, I'm sure I'll have a way to, to kill it at some point. And, of course, if I burn it, it probably can't do much to me anyways. I can probably burn stall it and stuff like that. So, um, that'll be okay, I suppose. But this thing is a legitimate uh, late game cleaner. Um, he doesn't have very much for this thing at all, because once I get a Trick Room, this thing will kill everything on his team. Uh, with the Nasty Plot up, I can one-shot Sceptile, I can one-shot um, Fortress, as long as it's not like AB. I can one-shot Gardevoir. I can easily two-shot Drapion, I mean Politoed, and I could probably two-shot um, Kieran Black. But everything else will probably be a two-shot. Um, maybe Kieran Black, and maybe... Uh, Maybe Pert might die after rocks, depending on their spread. So that's something that's really key. But this thing is a legitimate, legitimate uh, win con. Um, the last time I brought this was last week. It didn't do much because I sacked it to a Como. -O. Um, but it is a win con in this game. I do need to keep it preserved, so I will be careful with that. Next up, we have the Alola Nine Tails running Overveil, Hidden Power, um, Hidden Power Fire, Freeze Dry, and the Moon Blast. Now. Um, this is my Aura Veil setter. Obviously, if I get up Aura Veil, he does have a hard time breaking me because his, his very few breakers will have a lot of trouble breaking me. Um, freeze Drive, of course, is be able to hit that Poly to the Ludicolo, the Swampert. Hits all of them for super effective damage. Ludicolo and Swampert for four times super effective damage. Um, you know, uh, Blizzard is pretty much worthless in this matchup because he's got rain of his own, so his weather, so it won't be really useful to run that, so... Um, and of course, Aura Veil, it's a little weird, I know, because he has potential rain, but if I know, like, I bring in this in on Politoed, I can easily just get a Veil, so it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, Politoed can't do much back to me besides Toxic or Encore or something like that, so got to be careful around that, but besides Aura Veil, still a great move here. i um, have got a decent speed tier against his team. I can pretty much check his uh, Mega Sub tile unless he's running Hidden Power of Steel, which is potentially a thing. 
Um, his grass moves probably hurt me, but like you know, if I am bulky or have a veil, he probably will want to run hidden power steel potentially. Um, so yeah, I mean that's pretty much it for the Lola Nine Tails. It's got um, you know near max speed. Uh, I mean it's got it's got it's got a lot of bulk, not that much uh, speed invested. So um, because I mean I can't run outrun Ambipom, so I might as well just EV to outrun the um, Karen Black. So that's pretty much the uh, or the Guard of War, whichever one's faster. I think Karen Black's faster. So yeah. Final mod on the team is the Hariyama Adamant Guts Flame Orb. Of course, bulk up. This set does exactly. It does six of his team. It does without a doubt. Um, if I'm able to get up a bulk up in Trick Room, um, the only thing I'm worried about is that um, he could have protect a lot of his mons in order to stall out Trick Room. But if that, excuse me, if that was the case, um, then you know that means he'll have one less move to hit my team with. So, um, but Fighting Stab just shreds his entire team. He doesn't even have a Ghost type on the scene, which is fantastic. So. I could just click close combat at times because nothing wants to switch into a plus one close combat at all besides Gardevoir, but I do have Boulder Punch for that, and then I'll definitely knock it out after a close combat. So if I'm able to get a bulk up on something with Aura Veil up, this thing will shred him. Like, it will just completely destroy him if I'm able to get that. Um, so I got to be careful. I can't swap it into Celesteela. I can't swap it into any of his breakers like Karen Black or, I guess, Sceptile, I suppose, but... I gotta be extremely careful with that, but with that being said, this is our team for Root. It's a little weird, I'm not gonna lie. Like it's it looks like it's a little too standard. Like there's not that many like weird techs on it. It's just like a lot of like offense with like some minor trick room. So I'm hoping this team works out. I feel like I know how to play it, just looking at the at the build, I'll have a way to play it. So I hope you guys enjoy the battle and I will see you guys in a bit when we take on Root, coach of the New Jersey Robats. See you then. And we are back for setting up the battle. Of course, this is PGBL Week 4. Um, hope you guys um, enjoyed that team builder. Again, it's, I'm trying to rush the team builders. I'm not trying to rush them, I should say. But I'm just trying to have quick... Um, let's keep it all in one video to make it a little better. I know I haven't left timestamps in any of the videos, but I'm sure you guys can just skip and find it and stuff like that. So um, I, I know my videos, if they ever come across as you know half-assed, I guess, um, that's never my intention. Um, I'm just trying to make it as easy as I can with two leagues I'm doing. Um... Uh, you know, and uh, school will be starting up uh, next week, so that's when things might get a little bit rough. But um, then again, we've we've got a pretty good chunk of the season um, taken out from some of these battles, so uh, I've been able to have a clear head and stuff like that. So you know, that's cool. We're going to the Krosma version too, because I know Root likes the Krosma. Uh, but of course, like I said, this is a long time coming with this battle. We wanted to battle Root for a long time now, um, even though this isn't like the ideal way I want to fight him in like a random draft league match. But you know, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be a big challenge, though, because this team's a little weird in terms of, like, bulk and, like, you know, his threats do actually, like, he has a little bit of threats, but they all do really well against my team, so um, I need to play smart. Um, I need to be, um, you know, not too not too obvious with my, my predictions because Root does uh, make some, some softer reads at times, so, um, you know, I'm trying not to bank on that kind of stuff, but i got to play smart. I can't play stupid. i got to play... Uh, Really smart because he does have some bulk that might be able to last longer than I wanted to. So I need to play smart and we should be alright. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we do see the Amber Palm, which is a big threat to my team. As much as I hate saying it. Um, Gardevoir. Drapion. Pert. He hates Pert. Uh, Celesteela. And the Kieran Black. So we had to fight some Kieran Black back to back. I recorded my uh, other my my XBL matchup um, last night, so I just faced another one. So um, pretty difficult lead. Like Amber Palm is really annoying for the team. Like it just kills everything, which is really frustrating for me. Um, Let me check my Mew set real quick. I'd like to burn his Amber Palm. That'd be ideal. I think Mew's pretty safe because I don't want Amber Palm getting too many kills on me. You know? Mew's pretty safe. Uh, I would assume Fake Out into Knock Off would be his play. I, I do tank that, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'd probably take a fake out last resort as well. If he's fake out last resort, then, it, then my Kofi Greek is wall. So, um, good luck to him, of course. Hopefully, we pull out a good win. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Got a strange uh, matchup here. 
His only real offensive threats are the Amber Palm and the Karen Black. Stila can be as well. He does actually lead with Stila. Um, looking at the matchup, I'm a little worried about a, a physical set. Um, I'm going to go ahead and burn it turn one. I think this is the play. I doubt he's atomized either, so not too worried about that. I mean, if he is, I have ways of dealing with it. Atomized isn't that big of a deal. I mean, it's a threat. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is, I, I would, I feel like it has to be physical to be a threat. Because if he's special, Mew walls. But if he's physical, call for Grigus walls. So it kind of just pick your poison, essentially. Burn would be really nice for this thing. We can burn this thing. Not sure what he's gonna do here. He's got he's got to respect the Mew's offensive capability as well. He's got to respect like Thunderbolt, Flamethrower. He, I feel like he has to respect it. So, um, I think he will probably go into his uh, Drapion. Yeah. So I need to connect this burn here, so I don't get pursuit. So I don't get pursuit trapped. And we do, which is perfect. Um, he could have a Lumberry, I suppose, but. You know, not the biggest deal in the world. Um, and I am running Tim in Nature, if I'm not mistaken. And I am burned, so I might as well just go for the nice U-turn. I mean, he is burned, I should say. And I'm kind of hoping he did Pursuit, because I'd rather take the damage now. But he didn't Pursuit. Hmm. I guess I can probably go into... I mean, if I double dance Thunder, this would have been okay, but... Let's go Thunderous here. I don't care too much about my Life Orb anyway, so... Took that rather well, I th I'd probably say. It's packing the Black Sludge. Hmm... Yeah, I'll just click T-Bolt here. Getting off damage is important. Um, if he goes into Pert, that's fine. He's got to respect the Grass Knot as well, so... Um, Thunderbolt should be fine here. Could be a T-Spike coming my way, which I wouldn't mind. Hmm. Does stay in. Does a really good chunk to him as well. Goes for Poison Jab. Does a pretty good chunk. It's a crit and a poison, so Root uh, coming out with that hacks a little bit. Uh, it's not his fault though. You know, obviously it's uh, you know that's the way it's played sometimes. So um, got to be careful with this because I don't want to lose to a Celesteela. Um, I will go for the U-turn on this play here. Um, although realistically, a Celesteela just needs to protect a, a turn, and he'll have a good chance to kill me. Hopefully, this knocks him out though. Doesn't knock him out. But I do imagine he will go for the poison jab, so um, I'll go ahead and go into stack Prescott here. Uh, yeah, go into stack Prescott. Just knock me off. That's fine. There's no damage. And I don't want to get brick breaked, so what I will do. He's going to Mew and go for a U-turn to knock it out. Plus, there's a possibility he could have Taunt, could have a fighting move, so. Um, that's why I opt to do that. Does Taunt. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's going to have Taunt on a lot of Pokemon, just so I can't go for Trick Room for free. And I can pretty much just click U-turn. I will knock it out. Okay, so it looks like Drapion will go down. Thunderous took a little more damage. I would have liked it to, but that's because he got the crit and the poison. So um, I guess that's fine. So it's looking like Mew will knock out Drapion, which is a pretty good deal.
All right, Muse picking up where I left off. It's third U-turn kill in, in, in two weeks, so. Um, we'll crush all trap on real quick. Hmm. Let's go into my call for Grigas, because this doesn't really promote anything in particular. Hmm. I guess this kind of promotes Karen Black, but uh, yeah, I think Karen Black comes in here like no matter what. And if that's the case, I'm not sure what I do, because that pretty much means it's a Z movie bringing Karen Black. I'd be happy with Celestia though. If Celestia comes in here, that'd be perfect, but that probably won't happen. I think Kieran Black comes in. Because if it's special, um, I doubt it's Choice Scarf, because Choice Scarf doesn't make sense on my team. Although it could make sense because all it needs is a Choice Scarf to outrun my entire roster. Um, but then again, I'm Trick Room, so. I'm not sure what he'd bring in, but I think I think Kieran Black has to come in here. Or potentially Swampert with Toxic. The one thing I, I'm happy about him not bringing Fortress. That's one thing I'm happy about. Um, he didn't bring Rain either, so I guess he kind of played around the fact that I wouldn't bring, uh, you know, uh, Mega Cam. So he doesn't go into this. I guess Spec Shadow Balls is play. He could have Taunt as well. I'm going to try the Trick Room. Goes up to Moonblast, which is fine by me. That is definitely Toy Specs damage. First attack drops. So Root is coming in. Not messing around here. Um, I'm hoping he just kills me. So what I what when I once thought was gonna be a win con ended up not doing anything here. So uh just need to put this thing in range of bullet punch from Hariyama. That's all I needed to do. Or Stack Prescott can grab some kills too. I mean, he does have Swamper, which is annoying, but uh, Hariyama's probably going to be my way to deal with this. But then again, I can't get my burn, my fake out. I got on a fake out. You know? So. Doesn't switch out here. So, Lassila comes in. I'm surprised he didn't go into Ambipom immediately. Hmm. Interesting. This is kind of a problem, but I'm gonna go for the wisp. But at the same time, I mean he's probably a special variant, don't get me wrong. Maybe Shadow Ball was the right player, nasty plot. I'm not sure. Alright, hopefully he's physical. If he's physical, we're in really good shape. He is special, though. Alright. So this makes things a little bit harder. Not for Mew, though. Mew can wall this thing pretty well. But getting thunder, getting burnt poisoned with my thunder is what's, what's going to suck, because now I can't reliably kill the Steela, which is rather annoying. I think what I will do is go into Mew right here. I need Hariyama in, man. Okay. So br me bringing this thing, I'm kind of hoping he, he expects me to have a, a way to hit this. Hmm. Oh, we see this air slash. He has leftovers. He's not a Z-Mon user. So let's just go for the U-turn. Gonna be a slow U-turn. Um. 
He's got Air Slash. I'm not sure what other, what other move he can have, though. He's going to have a ground move for a stack attack. -a. That's, that's a given. If you were to go into something like Kiram Black, that'd be perfect. That'd bring a stack attack. -a. Or actually, this is the last turn of Trick Room, so I can't even do that. But I can finally go into Thunderous. Get flinched. Man, you know what's funny? He always talks to me about him getting bad luck, but this is the moment we play. Everything's going his way right now. But I'm still in decent shape. Like, it, it sucks that you know I um that I took all the damage I have taken so far on some of my important mods, but you know it's definitely uh, still a struggle because now I don't have a reliable way to switch to this to this thing. Uh, which is a big big problem. Like I have nothing. I can't swap into this thing at all. I gotta stop Copper Grigus. Air Slash again. And now I have to go into Thunderous. And all he has to do is protect or to switch into Pert. And his special defense did rise, which is really bad. Like, really bad. Uh, I know he has Earthquake. I'm pretty sure Stack Attacka can live in Earthquake, though. So that's one thing that I will keep in mind throughout this game. So let's attempt to go for the Thunderbolt here. But all I need is a free turn, man. If I could just get a free turn, that's all I need. The only problem is Stack Attack is my only Trick Room Setter left. I knew when I looked at this team that it wasn't ready for Celesteela. I knew that from the start. So, I, got, I mean, I think I'm, I'm already in a big hole here. I'm kind of hoping he just gets greedy and goes for the second beast boost. And I don't see why he wouldn't either, you know? like. He... But then again, I think he has to understand that this is his win con. I can't kill Celesteela if my Thunderous goes down. The only other way I have is my stack attacker. And he does stay in. I need to crit him. Alright. Hidden power ice, it looks like. And I'm thinking his last move is Earthquake. That's what I'm thinking. There's no way it's going to be able to kill Stack. I don't think. But um, he could have a mixed variant. So we don't know for sure. Let me go ahead and do a damage calc here. It could kill. So I got to be careful with that. It is no, it's 211 base defense, so you know, it's not, there's no way it's gonna kill. Yeah, I'm going stack right here. And Pert probably will come in. But that's all I, I mean, I, I need a Hariyama to get a chance to set up. That's, I mean, to get him to come in for free. Hariyama's really key to this match right now. This won't kill. There's relatively nothing. Pert is an answer. Like he, he can bring it in if he wants to. I think I have to make a play. I'm going to double in the Hariyama. I could probably get up rocks too, but if I double in the Hariyama, I'm in really good shape. And if you bring in Pert. Because you bring in Pert, then I get my Flame Orb off and I get, I get some. I'm taking some lives here.
Like, Pert's such a safe play for him right now. Like, he has no reason not to go into Swampert. If it's max defense, it's a good check to this thing. It's a hard counter, almost. But then again, part of me thinks I should probably just click the Z-move, but... Um, I think he's either going to switch in or click Earthquake again, so... He does Quake again. I'm not sure why he did that, but... Um, I guess it'll work out. Oh, I forgot he's burned, too. So I was worried about Earthquake doing a lot, but I forgot he was burned, so... Uh, one thing I did forget about that. And my burn does come into play here. So now he's got to pick some, some sacks, because I just get some kills now. Uh... Okay. So I get a couple of turns. He's gonna have he's gonna have fake out potential with his with his ammo palm. But now he picks him on the die. Hmm. I don't like where I'm at right now, but. Because it looks like um, Stack Attack can't ever set up Trick Room again unless Gardevoir locked himself into a Psychic or Moonblast. Because we know it's Specs already. Uh, so that's something we got to be careful of. He's in a Sack Celesteela, so it goes down. And I still got two turns to mess with here. Okay. He has nothing that can be slower than me. Ambu this is screaming Amber Palm right now. Nine Tails is looking pretty solid as well. There's Kyle. That is indeed the Amber Palm. I'll play close combat in case he doesn't click fake out for whatever reason. Hmm, Mew's looking pretty solid as well, just in order to help me win this game, but... I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to favor him right now. It's tied up, but it's going to be tight here. He actually doesn't even have Fake Out. I guess he's Focus Sash. No, he's not. Okay. Whoa. I'm not sure what's going on here. Did he forget to put Fake Out on there? But Hariyama is going... Going all out. I'm not sure why he doesn't have fake out or why he didn't go for it, but wow. Okay, so we get one more kill. Amber Palm going down might just be the game clincher because now um, Gardevoir, if it wants to kill this thing, he's gonna have to lock himself in a move that lets Stack Attack get up trick him again. So um, at this point, if I keep Hariyama safe, which now I probably should, um, I think I should win the game with Trick Room. But him not having fake out or misclicking or whatever it could have been. That's what's going to help me win this game. I think his best option now is probably to go into Pert and try to just bait me for going a fighting move and go into Gardevoir or something. Or, But even then, Gardevoir is four times resisted, but I have Bullet Punch still, so hopefully that can help me grab a kill as well. But Hariyama is proving itself right now. Swampert just come in. Uh, it's going to tank a hit, but not really well at all. Yeah, so we do have one turn of Trick Room, one final turn of Trick Room. Part of me really wants to save this, but... No. I have to go into Ninetales here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go into Ninetales. No reason, no reason to sack this off. Take the Earthquake, take the Scald, whatever it may be, and fire off a Freeze Dry. And then from there, we just play around with what we got. Don't have to go for Veil. Don't think it's necessary, I don't think. Does Skull. Perfect. I could go for Veil, though. That might be a good play, because um, then I get eight turns of nice uh, defensive capabilities. But at the same time, Freeze Dry will blow this back, so let's go for Freeze Dry here. I do have Moonblast for uh, Kieran Black, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, taking a bit of a more offensive approach. If he ends up being Choice Scarf Kieran Black... Then Iron Head knocks me out, and then I can always go into my something else, something that can take a hit. So uh, let's go into Big Black, Kieran Black. Um, this pretty much is screaming that he has Choice Scarf. If not, maybe uh, Roselli Berry or something along the lines of that. So, and either way, I can handle it. 
He actually is leftovers. So is he sub? I think he's sub three attacks. But if that's the case, he has to have Iron Head, so. What I probably can do. Just Moonblast. Put it in range of Bullet Punch. That's always the play right now. Good damage. That's definitely in range of Bullet Punch. Uh, special Attack Drop could help me out here, but I do expect Flash Cannon to be the, the case. Will knock me out, probably. I would think so, even after the Special Attack Drop. So, um, Kieran Black is still alive. Let me go ahead and check if Hariyama can knock it out with uh, a Bullet Punch. That's going to be pretty crucial to this next turn. I'm pretty sure it can. It's essentially a plus one. Thirty-six to forty-three percent. Let's put no HP investment. Oh man! Either way, he's flash cannon. I could probably go into Mew. Yeah, I have to go into Mew here, and just click Ice Beam a couple of times. He could be Roost though, so I gotta be careful with that. Uh. This is a problem. I may have messed up this game. I may have messed up. Uh, I guess I'll just Ice Beam. Okay, he expected the, the uh, Aura Sphere, which is nice. Okay. That's not bad. This is perfect then. He probably expected Aura Sphere. Okay. So, okay. That's probably what he expected. Go for Ice Beam here. Oof. I think I saved my game right now. Um, you know he specs already. Specs Shadow Ball could be the play. Attack Attack gets some Trick Room, and from there I think I'm gonna hopefully win this game. So I will go for the slow U-turn. Actually, it could be faster. So I think my best bet is probably to stay and get up Ice Beam damage. I gotta get it in range of Bullet Punch, or you know whatever the case may be. It's gonna be a tight game though for sure. We know it's, it has to be specs. has to be, given how much it did earlier. Bullet Punch is going to do 69 to 82, 82%. So if I get off another Ice Beam after Hail, it should be able to knock it out. Uh, but man, this is a tight game. Stack Attacka, I think you take a Shadow Ball as well, without a doubt. But I'm doing my calcs here. That spec that does definitely indeed a, me a specs moonblast for sure, without a doubt. Um, no question. And that knocked me out. So knowing he specs, um, I go on the stack. I get up trick room. And from there, I think this should be the game. Because all I need is a Chip Swampert. I think Kieran Black will die. Swampert hasn't been shipped yet. So I got to hit it with a nice Continental Crush. This Moonblast here will knock me out. That's a really good amount of damage though. I can go for Gyro Ball here. And then Crush Pert. That's going to hurt. Actually, Gyro Ball going to do more to Pert. I think. Okay, I do have poison. I mean, that bullet punch is going to be crucial right now. It might come down to that, to be honest. The question is, what's going to be doing more to hurt?
you know. Uh, it's going to be max defense, I'm assuming. Has to be. So they're doing the same amount of damage if he's relaxed. So I think Crush is the play. Without a doubt. I don't think there's a way he can win now. Unless he has Protect on something. Or some sort of priority. But I think I win this game. Him Moon Blasting may have cost him. Because looking at that damage, I think Shadow Ball might, may have been able to do the trick. Actually, probably not though. Probably not. He may have not had Shadow Ball, to be fair, but... He's probably debating on if he should even sack this to let me get a, a beast boost, so... Um, probably good deliberation on his part. Uh, we know it's in range of Bullet Punch, but it's going to come down to his Karen Black. That's ultimately what it's going to come down to, if I can knock it out with a Bullet Punch, if I run out of Trick Room turns. Um, he does indeed sack it off, though. Okay, so we are plus one. My close combat will knock out Pert after a bit of chip, so don't have to worry about that. So we know Continental Crush will be doing a pretty good amount of damage to this Pert. And then him sacking Kira would to seal the deal, so we don't have to worry about that being a thing. Um, if he wants to try to pivot around or, or all that nonsense, so... Um, getting this damage off is what's going to be crucial. It does get Aqua Jet, doesn't it? Swampert get Aqua Jet? If it gets Aqua Jet, it won't matter. But he has Scald, so... If it has Aqua Jet, it won't matter because what I would do there is bulk up. Um, kill it the next turn, and then Bullet Punch will guarantee knockout. So, I, I think even if he does have Aqua Jet, it, it's probably not going to matter. But I, I'm going to check if it gets Aqua Jet to be first. So it, it doesn't get Aqua Jet, so I'm tripping. So This should be the game, ultimately. This chip will put it in a range of close combat. But it depends on what that Kyurem spread is, though, man. That's what's going to be crucial about this, because Kyurem is, is a fat monster. We don't know what kind of spread that is. But um, Hariyama is fat, so we, we gotta just play it. But I'm gonna be losing my defense from close combat, so... Um, this turn is huge. I might have to bulk up first on my Hariyama before I attack. But it might be a big, it might be a misplay. I don't know. It's gonna be crucial. Definitely in range of close combat, without a doubt. Goes for Scald. We know it has Earthquake. So now the question becomes: Do we go for bulk up or do we go for the uh, the close combat? Yeah, so we have two turns left of Trick Room. I think Bulk Up is the right play. Bulk Up's the only play. He's not going to have Protect on Pert. There's no way. So we'll just we'll Bulk Up here. Kill it next turn and kill the Karen Black. And then we should be good to go. He's probably Scald, Earthquake, Stealth Rock, and I imagine it has Roar as well, because Roar would help him stop Trick Room. Does Scald, perfect, this shouldn't do too much to me. Um, and as long as he doesn't have Protect, we should be good to go. We should be good to go. Another Thriller. He does end up sacking off his uh, Kiram Black. Ooh, that might matter a bit. That might end up making us lose the game, honestly. That might actually help us lose the game. Help him win the game, I should say. I think Root made a nice play. Maybe I should have bullet punched there to ensure I don't lose my defense, but um, now we gotta hope he take a Scald, which I don't think we do. 
I think Root made him into a good play there. Oh man, I think Root made a nice play. I think Root made a nice play. Can I live? Can Hariyama live? Hariyama, live! And Root takes a really close game. Oh my gosh, I thought I had lost early with that with the Amber Pump coming in. But he ended up uh, coming back with that. I knew I probably should have bullet punched. I clicked close combat a little too early. Um, uh, ultimately, I mean, another thing I could have thought of. Uh, if Kieran Black, I could have probably just killed Swampert and then went for the bullet punch to hope I would kill. So maybe that was a misplay on my part. But um, I felt like that was probably the right play. But at the same time, if I wanted to make that play, I should have bullet punched on the Swampert expecting Kieran Black to come in. So... Um, you know, so uh, I guess I didn't execute my game plan very well at the end there. Um, ultimately, if he had fake out on Amapom, I think he would have won the game a lot earlier, honestly. Um, I, I felt this team wasn't built right. Celestila was something that was probably not the you know, most prep for on this team. But ultimately, good game to root. Uh, he did steal the game that I, we were looking to play each other against. But, you know, some hacks early did matter a little bit, wearing down my Thunderous. But ultimately, I just failed at the end. I wasn't able to execute my game plan. Um, all I would have had to have done was either bullet punch on that final turn or... Or just, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, expect bullet punch to knock it out. So, um, you know, I probably messed up that game a little bit. It was probably considered a choke on my part. But, you know, I didn't risk the Kieran Black having some weird spread. But then again, I probably, if he was going to be a weird spread, I would imagine that uh, Hariyama would um, probably be able to knock it out with bullet punch. And I wouldn't die to an ice beam probably. So, I think I messed up that part. But... I hope you guys enjoyed the battle, and I'll see you guys next week in which we take on... Let me check who we're facing off against. Uh, I don't even have the schedule bookmark, so that's kind of on me. Uh, I don't have the schedule. Uh, let me check who we're playing against, because I want to make sure we're playing against somebody. Um, but we do uh, take our first loss of the season to Root. Um, so good game to him. Uh, I play a little weird there at the end. I feel a little weird about it. Um, but overall, he played a great game, though, so we got to give him that much... Uh, it looks like we face off against uh, Josh, coach of the South, Tex South Texas Ableby, so our first r rivalry match. So hope you guys look forward to that, and I will catch you all next week. Go Rangers! Okay, guys, real quick before I end the video, um, I just want to talk about the last few plays and why I made the plays I did. So um, immediately after we finished battling, Root, Root pointed out that I had no reason to ever click bulk up because I did have two turns of Trick Room left. So all I had to do was click Close Combat twice and the game was over. But for some reason, I didn't check my my screen and didn't see I had two turns of Trick Room left. So I I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure I did see I had two turns, but I thought to myself, wait, why, I mean, why would I click, you know, Close Combat, you know, bulk up, you know? So I, I made a hard choke there. I, I just completely brain farted. Uh, you know, I completely threw the game. Like, that was a complete 100% throw. And it wasn't on purpose, I promise you. i just been playing a lot of Pokemon this past weekend. Um, I had a PC on Saturday. MSS Sunday, had a league match last night, and a league match today. So, um, I mean, I really have no excuse for the throw I made. Like, there's no excuse whatsoever. Um, I just wanted to make this little snip before I get crapped on in the comments because people are going to be like, we had two the trick room left, close combat twice, you know? Um, and, you know, I, I genuinely don't care for comments like that because ultimately there's always a reason why I do things or a reason why I screw up. But ultimately here, I just kind of made a huge brain fart to enemy costing me the game. Um, so we moved to 4-1, and one, which isn't a big deal. Or I guess 3-1, and one, I should say. Um, you know, I, I, I'm happy Root got the win because Root did make some questionable plays as well. Um, so I hope you got the win. You know, hopefully this keeps him alive for the playoff race, um, for sure. Um, but ultimately we're still in a good spot. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, it's a horrible loss because I literally like threw the game almost, I guess, in some people's eyes, but I just made a simple mistake. You know, I'm going to try to focus a little bit more. Been kind of tired with all these battles recently, but I'll have a little break in between then. So I hope you guys enjoyed the battle nonetheless, and I will see you guys uh, next week.